Uh, my name is Cameron Stewart. Thanks for coming out to my talk today. I work for Pivotal. Um, at Pivotal, I'm a partner solutions architect, so that means that I lend technical support to our partners. Uh, before working at Pivotal, I went through the Galvanize Full Stack Immersive Program, so it's really cool to see Galvanize sponsoring this event um, and to hear all about the amazing work that they're doing with Allstate. That is my Twitter handle. If you do the Twitter and you want to find me, that's how I can be found on Twitter. To be perfectly honest, I'm a little bit of what I would call a Twitter late bloomer, <laughs> but I am on the bandwagon now, so um, that's how you can find me. And of course, I am available through other platforms of communication, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, or good old-fashioned email. So if you want to stay in touch or if you have questions, please don't hesitate to uh, stay in touch. I would love to talk to you. Um, so I have to be honest that I picked out a pretty decent outfit for you all today, but then I was in the expo hall and I was talking with uh, the awesome folks at Grape Up and I noticed they had these really cool t-shirts. <laughs> And I thought, you know, that it's fitting for the name of this track that I get a t-shirt. So um, I definitely encourage you to go and talk to the Great Butt folks. They, are, uh, they offer professional, uh, con professional services um, around Cloud Foundry. So you should talk to them because they're experts in Cloud Foundry and also because they have really awesome t-shirts. Um, but we didn't come here to talk about t-shirts because obviously mine takes the cake. <laughs> we came here to talk about um, technology. Uh, these technologies specifically. Today we're going to discuss uh, Bosch and using Bosch to deploy Concourse onto Google Cloud Platform. And the reason why we're going to talk about all of these technologies is because everyone is trying to go faster. I think as organizations and as developers, we're all trying to go faster. We're all trying to get code out the door into the hands of our end users as fast as possible. I don't hear anyone in the keynote saying, you know, we were actually doing things too fast and getting features into the hands of our end users a little too quickly, so we decided to slow things down. That's not what you hear in the keynotes. It's obvious that what everyone is after is that rocket fuel, right? We're all looking for what it is that's going to give us the ability to go faster, not only to go faster, but to be able to go fast and still innovate with confidence. And what gives you that rocket fuel is the combination of different technologies and also processes and methodologies that support those technologies. So I like to talk um, a lot about cloud native and what the characteristics of cloud native are and what companies that you would consider cloud native, some of the um, just aspects of those companies and how they're doing what they do. And I think that some of the aspects are, you know, building uh, applications into microservices architecture or having uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery. And that's one that we're definitely going to talk about a lot today. You absolutely must, must, must automate your path to production. This is something that we all know well. I don't think this should come as a surprise to anybody at this point. But one of the core things that you're going to need in order to be successful or to be cloud native and to assist you on your digital transformation is to have high levels of automation in place. And what that accomplishes is that automation will give you that confidence, that confidence to make changes or to introduce new features without running the risk that it'll break other parts of your code. So having automation in place is really um, the safety net that allows you to innovate at a rapid pace. So we're going to talk about different methods of automation and different levels of automation that will give you that confidence and that security. So first, we're going to talk about Concourse, because we just mentioned that you absolutely have to automate your path to production if you even want to stand a chance at um, the you know, your digital transformation, your digital journey at being cloud native. Automating your path to production is the first step. So we're going to talk about Concourse. Concourse was originally designed to um, as a tool for the deployment of Cloud Foundry. And we're going to take a look at some of the constructs of Concourse. 
First one is resources. These are the three main concepts within Concourse. Um, before I actually dive in, I wanted to do a quick poll of the audience. Um, who here has played with Concourse or is currently using Concourse? Just about everybody, that's awesome. Um, we're at a Cloud Foundry Summit, so I imagine that just about everybody has heard about Bosch. What about GCP? Has anyone using uh, Google Cloud Platform? Awesome. Just wanted to get a sense of where we were in the audience. So jumping back into Concourse, there's three main concepts within Concourse, and they're resources, jobs, and tasks. Resources you can think of as um, anything that can be versioned and that you can pull down. So a great example of a resource is a GitHub repo. Uh, we're going to take a look at, at an example later on of a Concourse pipeline. And within that Concourse pipeline, we're just pulling down a GitHub repo. And from that GitHub repo, we are running tasks. Tasks are usually described within a job. A job um, is all of these things really come together to make your overall pipeline. So a task is usually um, a shell script or some script that is run that accomplishes you know, a single task. A job will describe how tasks and resources interact with each other. If we talk about Bosch, those are the overarching concepts within Concourse. If we talk about the main concepts within Bosch, we have stem cells, releases, and deployments. Stem cells are the base OS image that Bosch uses to create VMs. And it's an OS image, but it also includes basic utilities and an agent. And the agent is responsible for a number of functions, not only for sending out a heartbeat of the VM, but when Bosch is deploying um, a distributed system, the agent will go to the blob store to pull down the packages to deploy the, um, install the specific software on those VMs. So the stem cell is um, basically that OS image that Bosch, use, Bosch uses to create your VMs of your deployment. The release describes all of the packages and the start stop scripts that are needed for whatever you are deploying. Um, Bosch was originally the tool that was um, responsible for the deployment and lifecycle management of Cloud Foundry. But Bosch in general is a great tool chain for deployment and lifecycle management of any kind of large scale distributed system. In this case, obviously, we're going to deploy Concourse. So there are many uses outside um, of Cloud Foundry that Bosch can be used for. It's really good for any large scale distributed system. Bosch is really going to give you the capabilities that you need in order to handle some of the challenges that those large systems will present. So you start with a stem cell, and then you layer your release on it. And a release is, uh, you know, again, whatever you are going to be deploying, the software that you are actually using Bosch to deploy. And a deployment then describes the VMs that will get created with that software. And the deployment um, requires a manifest. Bosch operates on the notion of manifests. And a manifest uh, describes the deployment that you will end up creating. So we um, see all these things together. I want to give you a high level overview of how I've set up um, what we're going to walk through. So first, let's take a look at kind of a high level overview of all of the things that you need in order to use Bosch to deploy Concourse onto GCP. And we're going to start with our GCP environment. So I have a GCP account. And the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a project. That's pretty basic. Step one for anything you're going to want to do with GCP. Within that, uh, you're going to want to have a user that is an owner of that project. And you're going to want to create a service account that has editor access for your project. Once you have your GCP environment configured, these are the steps that we're going to walk through in order to um, get Bosch up and running. The first thing is that we're going to use Terraform to create the, requi the required infrastructure that Bosch is going to need. And the first step is creating the Bash and VM that will become your Bosch director. The Bosch director is a server that orchestrates your Bosch deployment. So the Bosch director is really the boss <laughs> you can think of. Um, and so the first step in deploying Bosch is to get your Bosch director set up. So we're going to use Terraform um, in order to stand up the Bosch director. Once the director is um, stood up, then we can turn our attention towards deploying Concourse. So we're going to deploy our Bosch director when, on the infrastructure that Terraform has set up for us. 
Then once we have the director, we're going to upload the stem cells and then upload the releases that Concourse will require. Once we have those things uploaded to the Bosch director, it's as simple as uploading one additional file, which is your cloud config. The cloud config is basically all of your IaaS specific configuration that you will need. So previously, all, um, all of your cloud configuration was in a single file, which could be very problematic if you were using multiple IaaSs, which you know, Bosch is definitely the tool uh, that gives you the ability to be IaaS agnostic, to have multiple clouds that you're deploying your applications to. So if you're deploying your applications to multiple clouds, it made sense within Bosch to have separate cloud configs that would um, contain that IaaS specific configuration. So you will upload and Bosch will update the cloud configuration, and then you will simply deploy Concourse with the simple command Bosch deploy. So that is a high level of what of the process that you would go through in order to use Bosch to deploy Concourse onto um, GCP. And so now we're going to take a quick look at that. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to SSH to my Bosch Bastion. And what we're going to look at first is we're going to look at the manifest file for our Bosch director. Initially, I had an... Um, ERB file, and um, what this is essentially doing is this is capturing the environment variables, and then I just populate my manifest, uh, my YAML file, with the values that I captured here in the ERB file. But we can take a look at um, this version is fine. So if we take, I mentioned that a manifest will describe the um, the a manifest describes how Bosch will create the, the resulting resource. And so if we take a look at the Bosch director manifest, we see um, a number of things. We're going to talk about some of the, the things that are consistent across all manifests. Um, when you see here cloud properties, that is always what is unique to your the IaaS that you may be using. So in this case, I'm using uh, GCP. We're always going to have uh, the notion of the releases. So this is the manifest for my Bosch director. So the releases that I'm using here are Bosch and the Bosch Google CPI. The CPI is the cloud provider interface. And that is the API that Bosch uses to communicate with your underlying IaaS. So we have to have that in place so that when we go to deploy Concourse, Bosch has a communication channel to communicate with your underlying IaaS to create the required resources that we need for whatever distributed system that we are deploying. So um, we see our releases here. We also see the URL of the release. Uh, this is where you can access uh, that release. Uh, release can also, um, uh, the Bosch team manages all of, well, the, uh, Bosch release can be available as either a, tar, a tarball or as a um, URL, as you see here. Uh, then we have our resource pool. So this is what uh, ends up getting created for us once we hit Bosch deploy. Um, we see you know, our networks. And then we have the uh, number of jobs. So with Bosch, a number of things the, uh, get deployed. And so there are a number of components in the Bosch architecture. And you can really uh, see those here. You have a health monitor. You have the CPI. Again, that's the way that Bosch communicates with the underlying IaaS. Health monitor is the tool or the way that Bosch understands the health of VMs and understands if they are online and healthy or if they are down and need to be resurrected. Um, the blob store and Postgres database to persist both VM state. Uh, the blob store holds the packages and that's where the agent will actually go to when VMs are being created. The agent will go to the blob store and grab the packages to install the necessary software on the different VMs that are being created. 
the database, the Postgres database is just to persist the state of the VMs. Um, and then there are, you know, different network configurations um, and things uh, like that that you can see here. Again, we specify here what our cloud provider is. We're using the Google uh, CPI because we're communicating with Google Cloud Platform. Um, so that is a look at the Bosch manifest. Now I want to take a quick look at the um, Concourse manifest. So for the Concourse manifest, we see um, in the releases that we have two things. We have Concourse and we have Garden Run C. Um, again, for the instance groups, we see something very similar that we did in the Bosch manifest. Every manifest has um, releases and instance groups and defines the jobs. Uh, this, um, this instance group is for uh, the web interface that we'll be interacting with for our, once we have concourse set up. So you can see here that we have our, uh, the external URL that we'll access concourse from. Um, how you authenticate against it, and then there are other jobs that will that um, Bosch will execute in order to stand up the necessary components um, that Concourse will require. Uh, last thing, is I wanted to take a look at the cloud config. So again, this um, is all of the IaaS-specific um, properties that Bosch will use in order to um, set up the infrastructure for your particular IaaS. So um, initially, when you are setting up your workstation to deploy Concourse, or to deploy your Bosch director, excuse me, you will need to explicitly export your project ID and different uh, compute zone and regions in order for those to be available via your environment. So those are being captured here. Um, and then you define the specific VM types um, and the different VM extensions that you will need for the VMs that are being created. Within um, compilation is where you will put your cloud properties, which are, um, again, just the properties that are specific to your underlying IaaS. So that's, those, that's a look at the uh, manifests for each of those things. Once you have your concourse, um, once you have your concourse manifest set up after you've up uploaded your stem cell and your release, it's as simple as uh, the command Bosch deploy, and Bosch will kick off creating all of the necessary VMs with the required software for whatever your distributed system may be. In this case, again, it's concourse. So once we have that all up and running, um, then you are f you are free to use concourse. So I have a concourse pipeline. Uh, set up over here for you, and I wanted to kick it off because I have a um, little application that uh, we're going to run through this pipeline. So I have some code here on my local branch of my, uh, or on the branch of my local machine. It's ahead of my master by one commit. So I'm going to um, push this code up to my GitHub repo. While that's happening, I wanted to take a um, or excuse me, so that is going to kick off uh, our concourse pipeline. And while that is kicking off, I wanted to just take a look at that pipeline. Oops, pardon me, just keep zooming in. Okay, so we're gonna watch that um, and in a minute, we should see that it is going to <clears throat> start pulsing yellow. I notice that there are a number of hands in the room, so it seems like we have a lot of concourse users out there. So um, we're all familiar with what this is going to look like once our pipeline has picked up that our uh, repo has changed. So while we're waiting for that, there it goes, kicks off. Uh, 
we're going to take a look at the pipeline. So this, um, as you can tell, is a very baby pipeline. There's not a lot going on here. Um, and that is intentional to highlight um, exactly what uh, the different uh, components that we're interacting with. So as I mentioned, concourse, the concepts that come together to create a concourse pipeline are jobs, resources, and tasks. So if we take a look at my pipeline over here, on your left, uh, the first thing that I'm defining is my job. And in this job, I have two, um, well, three things that are really going on. The first is that I'm going to get my Git repo. My first resource that I am using is uh, the GitHub resource. And I am able to parameterize my, the repo that I'm using, the branch, and then um, my private key. So I have a trigger here that's set to true. So concourse is going to wait for my GitHub repo to pick up a change. So I just committed a change. And so concourse has that trigger set. So it's going to kick off as soon as there's a change to my source code. Once uh, that change is picked up, we're going to kick off a task. I have a task here called build artifact. It is a very simple task. It's just pointing to a shell script which um, basically just takes my, this is a Spring Boot application, so it just takes my um, Java app and packages it up into an artifact. Once I have that artifact, which um, is saved, then I can use the CF resource to deploy that application. I have an instance of Cloud Foundry running, so I'm going to deploy that application to Cloud Foundry. So the CF resource is awesome because it handles everything for me. So that as a developer, I don't have to um, interact with Cloud Foundry at all. Concourse is automating and doing all of that for me. So it's handling, you know, targeting my instance of Cloud Foundry, authenticating with my username and my pass password, targeting my org and my space, and then going through, you know, issuing the commands that are necessary in order to uh, deploy my application. So it picks up the manifest that I'm using for that application and pushes that out um, to Cloud Foundry for me. So if we, um, again, this is a very small uh, pipeline. Concourse is great because it can be used for things big and small. It can be used for, you know, small little, uh, this is really uh, two very, well, three very small tasks. Or it can be used, you know, on mega scale where you can deploy to multiple different clouds. You can do fan in, you can do fan out. Um, you can do rolling deployments. It's really powerful in terms of the capabilities of Concourse. So if you want, you know, to see an example of Concourse at scale, this is the Concourse pipeline um, for Concourse. So I'm sure that uh, you all have come here before, ci.concourse.ci. It's uh, really awesome that you can kind of see this live, see it in action um, as it's happening. And what's great about Concourse is it's very elegant um, in its UI. Uh, it you know, has the yellow pulsing to, uh, to let you know that a job is in progress. This allows developers to have immediate feedback on the overall state of their applications as they're moving through this pipeline. So if there's something you know, that's big and red, they know that they can drop everything and have to go and fix whatever it is broke that pipeline. So concourse at scale um, definitely has more going on than the little pipeline that I'm using here. And if we jump into um, my output here, this is the part of Concourse that is actually interfacing with Cloud Foundry and deploying my application for me. So I'm going to grab my uh, URL of my actual application. And I'm going to pop it in here. And that's actually all I have for you. So. If you have any questions, I will be around. Um, and thank you all very much. I appreciate your time. <clears throat>